Good morning, everybody. This is Julie Ducre, live in the studio. Looks like we finally got the camera well adjusted. Thank you all for your patience. And hopefully you can see me now on Get Bigger TV. We are live in the studio. And my assistant dropped the camera. (laughs) But that's okay. That's what happens when you go live, right? So you guys should be able to see me. Now, because I can see myself on the monitor. Good morning. I hope everybody got some really good rest last night. I know that I didn't really get too much rest. Around uh, 11.15 p.m., I decided that uh, actually about, let's see, about 9.30, I decided I wanted some boiled crabs. For those of you who do not know, I picked up a hobby Late August of last year, I decided that I needed something to kind of de-stress. And uh, I learned, I figured out on my own how to crab. How to crab using a crab net. So I went on YouTube. You can find anything on YouTube. So I went on YouTube. I read a few articles uh, on Google. And uh, the rest is history. I've been catching. I haven't caught like any... Well, actually, maybe I did catch a dozen of jumbo-sized crabs maybe a year ago. But I've been catching mostly number one crabs. And what I do, I purge the crabs when I get home. And I steam them. 
and I bag them. And whenever I get ready to eat some crabs, they're always available in the freezer and they were so yummy last night. So this morning's topic is how to brand yourself the expert. You can be an expert. Is it easier to brand yourself in the business? Why can't you do both? Raise your standards. Raise your standards, folks, because our talents are entrusted to us like a master putting money into the care of his servants. We are stewards of our wealth. And I define wealth very loosely here, well beyond, well beyond material possessions. Let's talk about picking up a a niche. Picking a niche allows you to brand yourself the expert in that industry and helps you to separate from the pack. It opens up other opportunities like getting trade show booths or speaking at an industry specific conference, etc. Learn to think outside of the box. Learn to be more flexible. The type of niche that you choose does not have to be an industry specific niche. No, maybe you're just an expert in a specific market such as vertical marketing, where demand stems exclusively from a specific industry or demographic, also known as the niche market. You can even target a specific vertical and niche at the very same time. Create a lead magnet for your vertical marketing and or niche. The vast majority of visitors to your company's website, if you have one, won't convert to leads. There are a number of reasons why not. They may not be ready to commit or they may not be sure what services they need or they may not trust your company just yet. By offering these types of consumers an alternative to an intimidating phone call, You can collect their business information and move them along the path to becoming a client. There are a few companies doing this well, doing it very well. Walk the walk when it comes to your web design. Talking the talk is just not enough these days. You have to learn how to walk the walk and you have to be prepared. Regardless of whether or not You specifically offer web design. I believe that it's imperative to have a clean and presentable website. If your website looks like it was designed in 1998, guess what? Your revenue stream will stay at 1998 levels. Your website is how people perceive your company online. These are the bare minimum. And there are some companies which go beyond and above to display their services. So you're going to have to figure out how to walk the walk. I've done some research and uh, I'd like to share a little bit more of information with you. Um, And this is very, very interesting. Former Warner Brothers Music Chief Edgar Bronfman Bronfman Jr. bullish on business in the streaming era. I'm talking about digital streaming. So Edgar Bronfman Jr. stepped down from the post at Warner Brothers Group in 2012 after selling the company to a group led by Russian billionaire Len Blavatniks, Access Industries, has always been a believer in the music industry, putting up his own fortune to prove it. Now, the emergence of subscription streaming services has him even more optimistic about the recorded music industry's future. Bronfman, uh, B R O N 
F M A N. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. It could be Bronman, but there's an F, so I'm just going to say Bronfman. Told CNBC's Squawk Box that he favored a subscription or streaming model even in the 1980s and 90s when they were selling albums, he said. Related content, Barry Manilow named icon Warner Chapel wins top publisher. Justin Tranter calls for more LGBTQ songwriters at BMI Awards. And I think that's a great thing. The most recent report from IFPI indicated the global music industry had a year-to-year gain of 6%, driven by streaming revenue growth of 60%. That's the highest rate since the World Organization began tracking revenue in 1997 with a total of 112 million of paid music streaming services. That is pretty extraordinary, isn't it? Rothman said the music industry was the first to deal with the disruption of unbunding content, allowing consumers to buy individual tracks instead of having to buy an artist's full album which is um, currently undoing a lot of the media business plans and business models. Bronfman noted that music is back to a healthy growth, even though he said there are still potential roadblocks. And I'm thinking about, about our iconic and beloved Prince Rogers Nelson. I just wish he was here to see to see the strides that um, digital music music streaming has made, and so quickly, the artists do make more of their money on the road these days. Artists always make more money on the road, performing in concerts, uh, performing, you know, in small theaters, selling their merchandise, and things of that nature. Um, doing special appearances, artists always make more money when they're on the road. Spotify, however, complains that it pays too much for the content companies. And content companies aren't making a whole lot of money, according to Spotify. They say, quote, I think this is a fixed cost module And until that subscription module grows further, it's going to be tough to turn a lot of profits. Now, that's according to Spotify. Bronfman concluded by echoing one of the Recording Academy's favorite lines and reiterating the power of the music industry's enduring catalog of songs. He said, quote, people think back and have a soundtrack to their lives. And songs mean stuff to people. In a way, he says, it's the most compelling consumer content. Earlier this year, Bronfman, who's currently chairman of Endeavor, an international nonprofit development organization that supports entrepreneurs, was reportedly involved in a group of investors along with Meredith Inc. kicking the tires on an acquisition of Time, Inc. Now, that's pretty interesting. I have some more information that I'd like to share with you as well regarding Warner Music Group revenue. It jumped 80, it jumped 8% in the second quarter. That is huge. Warner Music Group's revenue jumped 8% in this, uh, no, it was in, Back in 2013, in fact, it was reported on May 14th of 2013 that in the second quarter of that year, that Warner Music Group, after the sale by Bronfman to another company, their revenue jumped 8% in just two quarters. Now, a quarter equates to four months. So in eight months' time, 
Warner Music Group's revenue jumped 8%. That is pretty extraordinary. Overall, their revenue grew 8% to $675 million versus $623 million for the same quarter in 2013 prior to the sale. Now, net income rose to $2 million compared to a net loss of $36 million the same quarter in 2012. That company attributed the gain to a 159% boost in operating income that equated to $57 million and a decline in interest expenses. Now, the music industry's long-term focus on growing its digital side paid off immensely, immensely, with a 20% gain in digital revenue, which rose to $281 million compared to $235 million in 2011 digital music streaming is the way to go for companies who are streaming artist music it's probably the most profitable business on the planet digital music streaming because a consumer can download 2.5 2.5 million copies of one song for a dollar and 99 cents or two dollars and 99 cents uh, with some of these services if you subscribe you can download them for like 99 cents that's a lot of money so imagine if there are say 14 to 16 songs on an album And 90% of the songs have been downloaded. That's a lot of money. I mean, worldwide. And let's just say that there were over 5 million songs downloaded. Get your calculators out. Over 5 million songs downloaded at $2.99 per song. That is extraordinary. Recorded music revenues grew by 11% to $554 million with digital revenue expanding 18% to $262 million. Operating income for the recorded music sector expanded a whopping 475% to $46 million. That, folks, is extraordinary. While music publishing revenue stayed flat at $127 million, the division reported an increase in digital revenue of 50% to $21 million thanks to increases in subscription and streaming revenue and download revenue. Performance revenue was up to 4.3% thanks to investments in TV and film assets. That is even more extraordinary. However, the company noted that the digital growth was offset and uh, to be expected to drop in mechanical and synchronization revenue as anticipated declines in physical sales and lower demand in commercials and video games were seen. So Bronfman, who was replaced by Cooper as the CEO for Warner Music Group um, and briefly served as chairman, had been charged with growth opportunities within Warner Music Group. His departure follows the company's acquisition of EMI's Parlophone label holdings, which were placed on the block as a consequence of Universal Music Group's buy of the EMI labels. Bronfman spearheaded the 2004 purchase of WMG from Time Warner by a group of investors 
The company will sell to Access Industries for $3.3 billion in 2011. Now let's talk about how to brand yourself. Let's talk about how to brand yourself. Entrepreneurs have always been focused on building the brand names of their companies. And for a very good reason. How else would people know they exist, what they offer, and even where they're located? How would they know? Some entrepreneurs invest in expensive PR companies, hoping for publicity in mainstream news outlets. Others, such as bootstrapper entrepreneurs, use guerrilla marketing tactics to generate interest with almost zero budget. We're living in a world where consumers and journalists alike are looking to connect directly with entrepreneurs and hear their stories. It's not just about what your company does, but why you started it. It's purpose and your vision. Social technologies such as blogs, Facebook, and Twitter have enabled entrepreneurs to become known. Entrepreneurs looking to garner media attention, attract new clients, and build their businesses, which should focus on becoming an expert in their field. For instance, Alexa Von Tobo, CEO of LearnVest.com, LearnVest, L-E-A-R-N-V-E-S-T.com, has branded herself as a personal finance expert for young people. As a result, Fox Business, the New York Times, and other media outlets have interviewed Alexa, which provides exposure to her company. Avoid establishing an expertise that, that's irrelevant to your corporate mission or goals in your corporate vision, because you'll be wasting your time. If you own a record label or a music production company, it's probably not wise to brand yourself as a nutrition expert, right? I don't think that would be very wise. Learn to establish a website or blog under your full name. The media... And your customers both use search engines to research you, connect with you, and potentially, potentially either do business with you or interview you. That's why you need to purchase your full name as a domain, your full name. Let's just say if your full name and and you're trying to brand yourself as an expert, you're Full name can be Alisa. Let's see. Let's think of something creative. Alisa Hennessy dot com. Alisa Hennessy dot com. Now, Alisa Hennessy owns. Let's just say the Hennessy whiskey. But she has branded herself on an expert regarding the t- the types of ingredients that should be used, the best ingredients found around the world that will give that Hennessy that special blend, that special taste. And she has branded herself as an expert to train up-and-coming, I'm going to say entrepreneurs, who want to make their own brand similar to Hennessy, but a different, you know, different, in, different, um, I'm going to say a different company, different modeling, different marketing, different concept, 
but but maybe a different type of Hennessy with a little added. I wonder if they make like a Hennessy that tastes like um, what do they call these red hot candy? I know they make Fireball, which I think is on on the line of a whiskey. That's pretty interesting. So she is she's branding herself as an expert to teach these up and coming entrepreneurs how to effectively brand your product and how to effectively make a product that uses some of the same ingredients as her company because she's now she's trademarked all of her ingredients which means unless she's willing to give them permission to use her ingredients they're prohibited from from using it she has a patent she is patent it around the world she's trademarked her brand everything she would have to give them permission to use it but she can offer solutions on how to find similar ingredients similar spices around the world that can best help them put together that type of brand of whiskey or Hennessy like type of alcoholic beverage. That's going to be, you know, very, very, very delicious and that they, they can move their product around the world. Maybe they can start in in a particular geographical area such as, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, the North Shore, Slidell, Louisiana. You get my drift? So start with purchasing a domain name using your full name. It could be jennifersmith.com or it could be promogirl.com. Your name could be Nancy Doe and you own a company that handles marketing and promotions and you have been running your company for 10 years and you've been highly sought after to, to do tra- participate in trade shows, to, to, to give seminars, lectures and things of that nature. So yes, you should have a domain name for your company as well as one for yourself as an expert. That is how you can do both. That is how you can do vertical marketing for your company and you can have that special niche as a brand expert, a marketing expert using your full name. If anybody has any questions or comments, my my phone line is always open. 504-865-3635. If you are watching me on Get Bigger TV, thank you so very much. And uh, spread the word, let everybody know that they can watch me on television. And this is a television channel. This is not a phone app. There's no app to be installed on the phone. And uh, I'm training a temporary cameraman and he kind of dropped the camera early but that's okay I believe and supporting people I believe in giving young people opportunities because that's really the only way you're going to learn that is the only way you're going to learn uh and mistakes do happen sometimes when you are going live so it's okay it's okay Marvin Marvin is uh beating himself up because he kind of dropped that camera when he was kind of positioning it, but it's really, really okay. So establish a website or blog under your full name. That's the first thing you're going to do. And this is going to separate your company from you individually. Okay. So if people want to hire you to do some lectures regarding a specific subject matter around the country, they can go to your individual expert website. And then if they want to check out your company and learn about your products or services or whatever it is that your company provides, they can do that as well. 
So that is very, very uh, good to have. Now, once you've purchased your domain name, you need to take a professional headshot. Professional headshot. And that professional headshot needs to have great lighting. The best lighting. You need to have the best lighting for your professional headshot. And then once once that headshot has been photographed, you need to find someone who can edit the raw, the raw, the raw image and optimize that image so it is going to look fantastic via the web. It is going to look so good. And having that picture and your professional biography, your personal email address, a link to your company's website, and also to the rest of your online exposure, social media, such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. This way people can get in touch with you in their medium of choice. Claim your name before someone else does. Yes, somebody can claim your name. Somebody can take your name and they can go ahead and they can purchase a domain name. They can copyright your name and there's not a daggone thing that you can do about it. Learn how to be a good source of information. Find out which media sources your audience reads. Or what streaming services do they listen to? What programs or podcasts do they listen to? What television programs do they watch? Are they a Fox fan? MSNBC? Uh, what is it? HLN? WWL TV here, New Orleans, which I love. Shout out to Sally Ann Roberts. You are definitely a mentor of mine and your grace and style and intelligence just inspires me daily. Thank you. You are my trailblazer. So think about putting all of these pieces together and ask questions, research the types of contents that these type of people provide and locate the exact gatekeeper to pitch. Now let's talk about gatekeepers as the general manager of big G artist agency. I come into contact with gatekeepers all the time. A gatekeeper is the first person who answers that phone. Hello, welcome to Home Depot. Hello, welcome to ABC Lumber Company or whatever situation may be. Whatever it is, right? Whatever it is. The gatekeeper is the one that is either going to transfer that call to the person who makes the decision or to the assistant of the assistant of the assistant of the person who makes the decision or the gatekeeper is going to hang up on you. So what you do when you are making the phone call, you have to have a visual image in your mind of what the decision maker, you've never met that person but you've researched that company. You are familiar with that company. You know exactly what products or services that they sell. You are familiar with some of their clients. You know who their clients are. You know what part of the city they're doing business in. So you can imagine what the manager or the director, you know, the type of responsibility that they have. And and just know that You're not the only one calling upon them. So it's the gatekeeper's job to block you. So when you're calling, always have a very, very, very friendly voice. It could be in the morning. You have to determine the best time to make those phone calls. And we're going to talk about that another time. 
There is a method to making those unsolicited phone calls. But I'm going to give you an example of how to get through to the next person who, of course, is not going to want to speak with you. But I'm going to show you right now how to break down that wall, how to shatter the gatekeeper's wall, make it come down. And it goes a little something like this. Now the phone is ringing. Ring, ring. Good morning. This is CBC Company. Hello there. Oh, hi there. Oh, my God. Hi there. Good morning. I hope you don't mind me saying so, but wow, I thought I'd called the wrong number. You have such a beautiful voice. Wow. You just made my day. Because usually when people answer the phone, they some people just sound so mean, but you sound like you're so very nice. Hi there. My name is Julie Ducre. I'm with Big G Artist Agency. And just the other day, I was having a conversation with one of my clients. And they were telling me that your company does this and da-da-da. And that I should be speaking with your manager because they just know that your manager would be interested in blah, 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 blah. Uh, Who would that person be? And when is the best time for me to contact him or her? Oh, that's, uh, that's Jane Smith. Well, when is Jane Smith usually in the office? And look, I know Jane is very, very busy. So believe me when I say this, I do not want to tick Jane off because I know she wears many, many hats. But you know the person who wears the most hats? Do you know who that person is? Uh, no. You. I bet you are the hardest working person in the company that gets the least rewards. I bet you are the hardest working person person in that company and you get the least rewards but but you don't have to go you you don't have to you know I I don't mean to put you on the spot but I just want to say if nobody else tells you thank you I just want to say thank you and look don't do it long and drawn you can write your little script keep it short I'm talking like 15 20 seconds 15, 20 seconds. Don't speak too fast. Because if people cannot understand you, they're going to hang up on you. Good morning. Or you could say, good morning. I'd like to speak with the hardest working person in your company. And shut up. Good morning. I would like to speak with the hardest working person in your company. And shut up. Uh, Well, that would be me. I thought so. (laughs) You know, you have to warm them up a little bit. To get what you want, you have to, you got to get them to kind of like let their guard down a little bit before you start demanding information. That's the whole intent, right? You want to demand information. Nobody owes you nothing. Nobody has to give you any information. They can just hang the phone up on you. So start off real, real nice. Hello there. Hi there. Never say hello there. Um, never call and start off with uh, uh, because they know, uh, uh, you sound stupid. Uh, uh, you sound like you're, um, unintelligent, uh, uh, unknowledgeable, uh, uh, and like you're just getting ready to waste their time and they have lots of work to do. You can start off once again. Hello, I'd like to speak with the hardest working com- uh hello, I'd like to speak with the hardest working person in your company, please. Thank you. Always say thank you. Hello, I would like to speak with the hardest working person in your company. Thank you. Well, that'll be me. I thought so. I thought so. I bet that nobody has ever told you how much they appreciate you. I get it all the time. I get it. Yeah, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. Ma'am, how can I help you? Oh, thank you so very much. Uh, Just the other day, I was speaking with one of my associates regarding your company. And I understand that you guys are into this. And they said that your manager would love to blah, 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 receive some information from us. Who would that person be? Can I get their name? And when is the best time to speak with them? 
Well, that's going to be John Doe. And when is John Doe usually available? Please don't tell me around lunchtime. Do not tell me around lunchtime and don't tell me when they're about to leave at the end of the day. Okay, well, don't tell anybody I told you. But if you contact them, say tomorrow at 10 a.m., they probably could give you about five to 10 minutes, but don't tell them I said that. Oh, you're so awesome. Thank you so very much. Wow. I really appreciate you. Thank you so very much and have a great day. Have a great day. Thank people and wish them a great day. They just got you closer to the decision maker. They just put you one step closer to the decision maker. So you have to learn how to be a good source to get what you want. What you want is information to move past that gatekeeper. And let me tell you, after that one fantastic phone call, the next time you call again, that gatekeeper is going to remember you. Hey, what's going on, Julie? How's the entertainment business? Oh, oh, I'm glad to hear. And, you, you know, if you got something you can give that gatekeeper, it could be a coffee mug. It could be a couple free tickets you got to a show that you're not going to use. Give it to them. And say, look, hey, I don't know if you're into a boxing, but we've got uh, uh, Mayweather that's going to be in Gulfport, Mississippi on such and such date, I've got these two extra tickets that I'm not going to be using. And I love to, you know, just kind of give them to you. And uh, you don't owe me anything. It's just my little way of saying thank you so much, you know, for, for, for helping me out here. You could have hung up on me and you didn't. So I really appreciate you. Oh, wow. Boxing. I've never been to a boxing game before. That'll be awesome. Well, well, can I... I, and then you say, well, look, I will have someone drop those tickets off to your office. Will that be okay? Or would you prefer that I put them in the mail? No, don't put them in the mail. No, no. Because I don't know. I don't know who might open the mail and find those tickets. I tell you what, I'm going to be off tomorrow, but I'll be back the next day. If you can have someone drop them off, say on Wednesday, at 12 o'clock, everybody's going to be out of the office for lunch. I would really appreciate that. Okay, no problem. Now, what is that address again? Get the address. It is worth it. It is worth it. It is worth the act of kindness. And be genuine and be humble. So you learn how to be a good source. Also, it'll help you build both yours and and your company's brand because this gatekeeper's brother-in-law might own a business or sister-in-law or father or mother or siblings or cousins or high school friends, college friends. You never know who knows whom. Now, generate brand awareness through networking. And that is something that a lot of artists today and a lot of young budding entrepreneurs fail. They fail to network. They don't, they think it's a waste of time. They don't think that they need it. Oh, I don't need to network. Why do I need to network? Look, I've got a beautiful website. My website is the bomb diggity. I don't need to network. I've got, this killer app, I've got about 500 downloads. I don't need to network. I don't need to network because I'm on the air at Crescent City Radio. I don't need to network. I don't need to network because I am running my own company. I don't need to network. But guess what? You're not selling anything, right? When was the last time? Your revenue exceeded six to seven digits. When was the last time your revenue exceeded six to seven digits? Think about it. 
You do need to network. You need to network with everybody at every chance you get. But the people that you choose to network, make sure that they have something that can offer you, that can help make you individually better as well as your company. If you are trying to brand yourself as an expert beat maker, you are a producer and you sit in your studio all day long just making these hot beats and you've gotten a couple hits you've gotten a couple hits you were able to sell some beats to one of the hottest local hip-hop artists in town but it just has not gotten to the mainstream level you want to establish a connection with somebody like beyonce justin bieber justin timberlake Katy perry those kind of folks, right? Uh, Demi Lovato, those kind of people. You have to make a connection with people who can help get you there. The only way you can make that connection is you have to start networking. You can go to these meet and greets, go online and find out where are these meet and greets being held in, in your city? Or even if you have to drive an hour or two outside of your city, it is worth it. Go to attend those music seminars or music business seminars such as Cutting Edge Music Conference that is annually every year. Attend those type of uh, conferences or maybe Springboard South that's held uh, every year in June. Go to some of those seminars. Take some of those classes. Start asking questions. Don't go to happy hour on Thursday. What is going to happy hour going to do for you? Because the people who are making the, 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 the big moves, the people who are really making the money, they're working. They're not sitting in a club on a Thursday or Friday night. They're, they are working. They're busting their butts. They're constantly thinking of ways to grow their company. They're constantly thinking of ways to extend, expand their brand, to help their artists grow, to move their artists' products and merchandise, to book more concerts, more shows. You're not going to find them sitting at the W Hotel in the lounge. It's very, very rare that is going to happen unless something is happening inside that hotel. There's some type of music business conference going on. That's different. But just to go hang out, wasting your time, sipping on cocktails and not accomplishing a thing. Next, you need to focus on generating your brand awareness more. You need to do it more often. Um, by forming relationships with people and your audience, you can grow your business and you can grow your personal brand and your business long term. There are four rules of networking that you should keep in mind that are mutualism, giving targeting and reconnecting mutualism. That's where you can have to create win-win relationships in business, making sure that you don't benefit more than the other party. It's about having a mutual fairness type of business relationship, like partnering with another business for an event. Then there's giving. Help someone out before asking for anything in return. This makes people want to support you. Targeting. You want to be very specific with the types of people you network with in order to save time and to attract the right people to your brand to your company, to you. Then there's reconnecting. 
Never, never, ever, ever lose touch. That way, networking, contacts, remember you when new opportunity surfaces. So you have to understand how to put all of the pieces together. If you're just tuning in, you can watch me live on television right now. Just go to www.getbigga.com. You can click on our uh, radio tab and you can watch me on our television channel there. Or you can go to our network partner, citylinktv.com, citylinktv.com. In the upper right-hand corner of the box, it says search channels, type get space big G-A-A, get bigger, get bigger TV. Or you can scroll down to the state of Louisiana and click on get bigger TV. Thank you for live streaming us at www.crescentcityradio.com. If you're listening on the TuneIn app, thank you so very much. And uh, before you... Get off of TuneIn. Please click follow. I need your love and support. Please follow Jule, J-U-L-A, Ducre, D-U-C-R-E on TuneIn. It is Jule Ducre on TuneIn. Also, I have an announcement. Real Talk Big G Artist Agency is on Facebook. We need more likes and support. We need you all to comment about my show. Uh, what makes me better is getting feedback from my listeners and viewers. Uh, is there something that you would like me to do more of? Or is that something that you wish I would do less of? Would you prefer to hear more music? Or do you want me to continue doing more of my educational shows and also have guests uh, uh, here live in the studio more often, which I will be bringing in more guests very, very soon. Big G Artist Agency is going to be making a huge announcement the first week in June. I cannot tell you what it is. This is probably the biggest endeavor that we have done besides partnering with city link TV. If anybody wants to purchase a television channel, contact big G artist agency. We have the exclusive license in the state of Louisiana to sell these television channels. It means that we have no competitors. Contact us at five zero four six, six, two, nine, eight, one, four, or you can email us at big G artists, a R T I S T S at gmail.com go to our website www.getbiggaa.com and uh, if you can't remember that just google big g artist agency we are everywhere also i'd like to announce that the living legend chuck robeson is going to have the move that thing hour starting next thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can listen to exclusive music by Chuck Roberson as well as chat with him live if you have any questions that you want to ask. If anybody's interested in uh, booking Chuck Roberson, contact Big G Artist Agency. Our telephone number is 504 662 9814. Or email us at BigGArtistsArtists at gmail.com. And we will hook you up with the living legend, Chuck Roberson. We're also on Spreaker.com. We have a podcast on Spreaker. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Install the app on your cell phone. Go to Google Play Store or Apple Store. Install Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, and then browse for Real Talk Big G Artist Agency. I have loads 
of loads of podcasts at Spreaker.com. We're very, very, very exciting. We're broadcasting live. You can chat live with us. You can connect with us. You can ask us any questions as long as it's not X-rated. And uh, we'd love to communicate with you. I'd like to speak with you all regarding an individual, a very important individual, named Dan Schwabel, S. C-H-A-W-B-E-L. Write it down. Dan Schwabel. S-C-H-A-W-B-E-L. Dan Schwabel is a career and workplace expert. The founder of Millennial Branding and author of the New York Times best-selling book, Promote Yourself. The New Rules for Career Success. It was published in 2013 by St. Martin's Press. I'm going to give you the name of that book again. I highly recommend that you go to Amazon.com, purchase a copy of this book today by Dan Swabell, S-C-H-A-W-B-E-L. The book is called Promote Yourself. The New Rules for Career Success Publisher is St. Martin, Saint Martin's Press, 2013. Dan is also the author of international best-selling book, Me 2.0, published by Kaplan Publishing in 2009. The name of the book is called Me 2.0. He produces a free monthly news a letter on workplace trends and career tips. He talks about four content marketing tips to boost your personal brand. Isn't that the ultimate goal, folks? Boosting your personal brand. Isn't that the ultimate goal? Isn't that what everybody should be thinking about? How to boost their personal brand? Well, here are a few simple techniques to use content marketing to boost your personal brand and extend your reach and visibility in the global online space. The global online space. Um, How to successfully, think about this, how to successfully expand your business. We all know that expansion is a risky business endeavor that requires more time, money, and energy than your current enterprise. But once a business reaches a certain capacity, there are only two options, grow or die, sink or swim. Yes. There is a disconnect between employers and employees on work-life balance. Right. But it's because employers are demanding hard skills over soft skills and how millennials can help. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share a little bit more information for you. And we're going to talk about it. Okay. The four content marketing tips to boost your personal brand. Content marketing. First and foremost, you need to understand what it is. In the form of sharing useful content such as blogs or videos with web viewers who relate to your brand can be one of the most successful digital marketing methods for your personal brand, but only with a solid strategy in place. You must have a solid strategy in place. According to the content marketing Institute's 2015 B to C content marketing report, 47% of the most effective content marketers have a documented strategy in place while only 5% of the least 
5% of the least effective content marketers have more of a devised strategy. With the abundance of types of content and channels to distribute content on, it's easy to get overwhelmed. Now, I hope that you will use these four simple techniques to positively use content marketing to boost your personal brand and extend your reach and visibility in the global online space. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first tip is number one, produce meaningful content on your website. Meaningful content. Think about that for a moment. First, determine your target audience and what passions you have that relate to your professional objectives. You might want to create written posts or videos where you share your expertise by teaching the audience a new skill, such as I'm teaching you all right now who are listening and watching me on Get Bigger TV. This helps cultivate an image of you as an authority in your field. Don't just promote yourself in your content. Think about the content consumer first and how you can best help them to brainstorm ideas for your content. Ask yourself this question. Would I be more helpful if I interviewed another expert and weaved their testimonial into my content or if I made their interview the primary content focus? Here's another question you should be asking yourself. How can I make my content more accessible to more types of users, such as by adding a transcript to a video for hearing impaired visitors? Sounds interesting. Or by adding photography to a blog spot for people more likely to want to consume images. And that reminds me, I have got to build a website for my photography, all the photos that I take when I'm out in the wildlife and fisheries area crabbing. I love photography. I, I love to take pictures and film in the nature, the wildness. Regarding frequency for posting on your own site, a 2015 study by HubSpot found for companies with 10 employees or less, 10 employees or less, blogging at least 11 times per month is ideal. The study also found companies that published at least 16 blogs per month receive three and a half times more traffic than companies that publish four posts or less a month. Start out slowly in the beginning if you're trying to find your content marketing rhythm, but aim for continual higher frequency. You've got to do better. While your content should not focus on you per se, it should help you generate positive sentiment and exposure for your personal brand. Achieve this by linking back to an about me page through your author bio link so people can learn more about you and do business with you. If they like your content or add a call to action to get in touch with you at the bottom of the page, offer to guest blog industry type of people love when People offer to do a guest blog and network, and that helps you to build a better relationship. Also, um, it helps to generate a positive backlink that benefits your personal brand's search engine optimization while exposing you, exposing you to a new audience that might lead to new business. Isn't that what the whole point is? exposure that is going to lead to new business. 
Host guest content on your site. It's okay to have guest content on your site. Number one, it shows support. And number two, it shows flexibility and your willingness to network. Uh, and then they might be willing to allow you to do a guest, have your, you know, your, your link guest hosting on their website. Letting an authority create quality content for your site is also beneficial. Now here's the problem that I have. If you are not skilled in building websites, don't do it. Don't do it. If you have never built a website in your life, or if you've only built one website and you are trying to create exposure, pull people towards your content, please do not build your own website if you do not have that kind of experience. And if you do decide to build your website, spend a little bit of money and hire an experienced expert web designer to go over your work and fine tune it if necessary. And 10 out of 10, they're going to have to fine tune it. But because it's already there, and if you already have content on there, you know, you might end up spending just a few hours at $95 an hour. Some companies charge $150 on up to even touch a website, regardless if there's one already up there. But there are a lot of flexible expert web designers who will charge you a block hour. Some people say, I tell you what, I will charge you a block uh, five, five hours and I will revamp everything in five hours. If they know what they're doing, they can do that. They can revamp everything in just a few hours and you will have a beautiful website. So you have to understand when you need to stay in your lane. And also seek out guest blogging on other sites to expose your personal brand to new potential contacts, letting an authority, as I said, create quality content for your site. That is so beneficial. Your site becomes more well-rounded and a better source for insightful information that will help drive traffic up. When was the last time you looked at your analytics report? And do you have a Google Analytics or do you know what Google Analytics is? Most probably you do not. While the guest poster is likely to share their posts through their own networks, bringing new visitors to your website is brilliant. That is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Also, you can use guest content to promote your own related content. Keep in mind, promoting your personal brand is not the goal with hosting guest content. Rather, make make sure that any promotion of your content that is relevant and non-evasive to the post. A simple way to ensure that is uh, to use a widget on your site that automatically displays related post on the bottom of the article or video to let people know what it's about. Um, and that's going to save you a lot of time and money. And you can add your free social networks at the bottom and digital connections to get your content to more targeted consumers. Next, set up profiles on all applicable social networks where your target audience is content related to personal branding will most likely be useful on professional networking sites such as LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn all the time under Julie Ducre. I don't have it under big G artist agency. I have it under my name because I have branded myself J U L A D U C R E on LinkedIn 
I'm the general manager of Big G Artist Agency. Now, within that LinkedIn page, I have my professional bio. I have a link to www.getbigger.com. I share all of our company's social media links. Uh, I will share today's broadcast a little bit later today on LinkedIn. You will find our Spreaker, Spreaker podcast for Real Talk Big G Artist Agency on LinkedIn. In fact, you're going to find it everywhere because I, I understand how to create a personal brand and a company's brand and how they work hand in hand. I understand the vertical marketing aspect and creating and establishing a niche. And if you follow these techniques that I'm sharing with you this morning, soon you will understand it too. On the content post, encourage discussions to keep readers engaged and coming back to post by asking questions on the bottoms of the post. If you're listening to my show right now, our call in line is open at 504-865-3635. Who is brave enough to call in right now and ask me a question? You don't, I, I can't see you. You certainly cannot see me. Who is brave enough right now? I challenge you right now to call in and ask me a business related question. The call in line is 504 865 Three six three five. If you're listening to my show right now, I thank you. But if you are listening to my show right now, it means that I am sharing knowledge and content and information that is beneficial to you. Certainly, you should be able to take away something and use that information in the knowledge that you're gaining this morning in your day-to-day life. If you are watching me on Get Bigger TV, Thank you so very much. Thank you for going to www.citylinktv.com. In the top right upper hand corner, it says search channels. Type in get space, get, and then space. Bigger, B-I-G-G-A-A-T-V, or scroll down to the state of Louisiana, and then you can click on Get Bigger TV. So thanks to everybody who's live streaming us, whether it's on radio or television. I appreciate you and love you to the moon and back. Just remember the call in line is open. I love to hear from you. I love to find out how am I doing? What do you think about my show? Is there something that you wish that I would talk more about? Is there a particular particular subject matter that you would like me to discuss? Call in right now, 504-865-3635. And uh, we can, we can uh, prepare a special show uh, relating to that particular topic. So you need to encourage discussions to keep readers engaged and coming back to post by asking questions on the bottom of post or by promoting a discussion via the post you share the contact, I mean the content through. Don't just copy and paste links into social networks. And this is the thing that bothers me. I am the administrator for the official radio broadcasters group on Facebook, the official radio broadcasters group. When I first created this group, I created it because I, for the purposes of networking with other broadcasters in radio, then we decided that we were going to allow anybody who's in the music entertainment industry in. You could be a singer, you could be a rapper, you could be a guitarist, bass player, whatever. If you are any way associated in the music entertainment industry, you can send a request. We will let you in. The official radio broadcasters group. Even if you sit down all day and make beats. <laughs> Ding, 
you know, you're a beat maker, right? I can't, I'm not a rapper, but that was fun. I'm not a rapper, but we will let you in. We will let you in. But what bothers me the most is when one of these artists shares a link and just post it, nothing. Just put it up there. In some cases, you don't know what it is. If it's not a YouTube video, you don't know what it is. Or they'll just try to put their name, no, delete it. I'm not, I'm not allowing that. If you are too lazy to spend a little time adding a little bit of content, content to let us know what it is and why we should listen or why we should watch. I'm like, next. Because I'm a very busy person. I'm not getting paid to go to YouTube to watch your music video. I'm not getting paid to click on that link and download your song. I don't know you. And you're not even in the radar. The world doesn't know who you are. So why should I spend my time wasting on content that has no relevance. But if you ask something like, hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey, I just finished uh, this, this hot, this hot song just came out the studio. We just finished our EP. I've got about four or five songs, man, on the EP. We're feeling great about it. We've been getting a lot of great reviews from the press or from Offbeat Magazine. And uh, do me a favor, everybody. Check it out. I appreciate it. And let me know what you think. Peace and love. Have a great day. Thanks. Or whatever. Put, use your own imagination. Use your own imagination. It could be something. Hey, this is uh, Juliet in foreplay. Check out our new song, Love Me Now. Available for download on Reverb Nation. For the first X number of fans who download my song, I'm going to be giving away blah, 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 blah at my next show. I'm going to be giving away free tickets. And like if I were to say right now, I bet if I were to say right now, for the next five callers, who call in now to 504-865-3635 to the next five callers. I have 10 front row VIP tickets and back seat tickets to the 2017 Essence Music Festival and meet and greet VIP party. I bet my phone line would ring off the hook because I am giving somebody something for free. VIP Essence Music Festival, which is the biggest in-house festival on the freaking planet. Backstage passes, meet and greet VIP, private party with the stars. My phone would be ringing off the hook right now, but I don't have those tickets right now. However, I might have those tickets, but if nobody ever calls in, so why would I want to give you my tickets? I'll keep these tickets for myself. You know, I'll keep two and I'll give the other eight away to, 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 to real, real people who are excited and want to come out and party with Real Talk, Big G Artist Agency's crew and Essence Music Festival. Hey, I love you. I want to give it away to you. I want you to have it. If I get free tickets, I want to give those tickets to you. And I, I get free tickets all the time. I'm giving away free tickets all the time. And um, 
It's about engaging your audience. It's about engaging. Now, we have ratings as every radio station. You know exactly who's listening, how long they're listening. Uh, you look at the demographics. I used to enjoy the, the old um, server that we had that would let us know. We could literally click on that and we could see where people are listening from around the world. I can't do that here because they changed their system. They changed their um, their down, uh, what do they call it, player stream, live streaming service to a different streaming service, and that service no longer offers that. But that was pretty, pretty cool. I hope one day we can get that back here. That way I can give some cities some love and some huge shout-outs. So you have to... Learn how to engage people. Learn how to build relationships with people. Learn how to network. Learn how to uh, find influencers. Communicate with them. Engage with them. Share your contact content with them and vice versa. But only share information that is relevant. Only share relevant information. Create and share with the philosophy, focus on helping, and you're on your way to strengthening your personal brand. All of this information was provided by Dan Schwabel. As I said earlier, Dan Schwabel is a career and workplace expert, the founder of Millennial Branding, and author of the New York Times bestselling book, Promote yourself, the new rules for career success. It was published by St. Martin's Press in 2013. Make sure you get yourself a copy today. Now, right now, we just got a request to play some music. I'm only going to play my music today, folks, okay? I'm just going to play my music. Today, because I did not bring in my uh, CDs that I wanted to bring in, but I've got some great music on Reverb Nation. You can check it out by going to www.reverb, R-E, excuse me, R-E-V-E-R-B-N-A-T-I-O-N.com, ReverbNation.com, forward slash Juliet. J U L L I E T T E and four play F O R E P L A Y. I want you guys to keep it right here, keep it locked in on Real Talk with Big G. This is Julie Dupre. This is how I live.
did and I wrote a song about it. You guys can download that song by going to www.reverbnation.com forward slash Juliet, J-U-L-L-I-E-T-T-E and foreplay, F as in Frank, O-R-E-P-L-A-Y. Juliet and foreplay. The song is called Low Down Dirty Blues, and that is my original song that I wrote. And I also co arranged that song with someone. Shout out to Will Frank, and uh, recorded it live in the studio with all live musicians. Everything that you hear on that song is all live musicians. No drum machine, live drums, live guitar, bass, uh, keyboards, an organ. Uh, saxophone and myself on lead background vocals and also another la- young lady on uh, background vocals so that was pretty pretty good I also want to thank all of my fans in Asia who have been purchasing my low down dirty blues and one in a million you for oh my god for years thank you guys so much for keeping that song number one overseas I really appreciate you. How to see a higher return on investment using content marketing. Let's let's talk about that very, very briefly. Ta- time now is 10, 17 a.m. Let's kind of get into that just for, just for a quick moment. Okay. Without fail, the question or one of the questions that I'm often asked is most from artists who are struggling to build their brand. And this question is, how do I build an electronic press kit? How do I build an electronic press kit. Now, certainly Big G Artist Agency, that's something that we do. You can go to www.getbiggaa.com. My response to musicians when they ask me that, I said, that's a very great question. But if you do not have any experience building electronic press kits, it's best to hire someone who does. Because... That electronic press kit is your content marketing, your product, your brand, your image, your visuals, in lots of cases, your merchandise. And it, it, it kind of, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, the best of this, the best of that is something that an agent or manager would send to a talent buyer to say, hey, check out this artist right here. They are amazing. I have not heard anybody perform like that since this artist, you know, whatever. So electronic press kit is something that I love, that I we've been building since 2003 I know that I have and it's a very very useful tool combined with your website you gotta have those two you need to have an electronic press kit and you need to have your business you see a lot of artists fail to realize you are the business you are your company you are the company So you need to have two things. You need to have your website for the company and you need to have your uh, electronic press kit for the artists. Two different things, vertical marketing and a niche V N V N. Remember this vertical niche, vertical company niche, You individually, your personal brand, you got to have those two things. Without fail, without fail, I can say 
that most, most up and coming independent artists do not have a website. They have YouTube, which is a good start. They don't even have an electronic press kit. It's mind boggling to see that artists are still doing it so antiquatedly. You know, the CD itself is ragged day. Ragged day, not raggedy, ragged day. I'm not going to give you these secrets on air because this is what we do for a living. This is how we make our money. By making sure that the artist's content, their product is going to be properly manufactured. Once you get in that studio and you do what you need to do, such as getting the best vocal tracks possible, lead, background, as well, as well as if you're going live with instruments, the best instrumental tracks, if you're using a drum machine, a beat machine, the best tracks, the best mixing, those songs. There's a process to mixing. There's a process. Just because you laid down some vocal tracks and you got a beat. What's the name of that little song that we used to sing when we were in grade school? What's the name of it? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses, all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Right? So you heard me try to sing Humpty Dumpty. Right? Itsy Bitsy Spider. Okay? What what the, what did the itsy bitsy spider do? Went up the water spout, down came the rain and washed the spiders out. Up came the sun and dried up all the rain. So itsy bitsy spider. I don't know the last part, <laughs> but somebody wrote that. Somebody wrote Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Somebody wrote that. Somebody wrote itsy bitsy spider. Then they put music to it. But was that it? Somebody just sang the lyric, you know, sang the lyrics out, played it over some music. Is that it? No, that's not it. It has to go through a process. And then it goes to another process and another process and another process. When I was part of the Influ- mentor, influencer at Springboard South, I sat on the panel. At the very last minute, uh, Barry Coffing decided he wanted to invite me on his panel. I appreciate that. I think one of the other guests was a no-show or something like that. So that was a great opportunity for me, and I appreciate that because uh, my radio show, Real Talk Big G Artist Agency, has sponsored Springboard South for like two or three years in a row. So I appreciate that. And uh, I was uh, I was on the marketing. I was on the A&R and marketing and brand uh, a panel. It consisted of myself. Um, uh, it consisted of, she claimed to be, uh, a road manager for Kevin Gates. I don't know that. I don't know, but that's what she said. A road manager. And there was another uh, individual. In fact, there were two other individuals associated with a Springboard South. And uh, we get dot com. W-E-G-E-T dot com. And there was another gentleman there who had partnered with Barry Coffing because they they help artists uh, uh, get their music license for uh, feature films and movies and commercials and stuff like that. So I, I was honored to be uh, considered, even though, like I said, it was very last minute. Uh, I had gone there to represent Cloud Microphones because they sponsor my show. Thank you very much, 44A Microphone, which I'm going to start using 
again here in the studio broadcasting using the cloud microphone 44A. So to make a long story short, I sat down and I listened to everybody. And then when it was my turn to speak, I had to be honest. I mean, I am running a company. I'm running an agency, big G artist agency. I'm not going to tell folks what they want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. And if you cannot accept what I'm telling you, then we don't need to be working together. I don't mind you terminating our contractual agreement. Trust me, I sleep very well at night. I don't have no issues with that because I don't do sloppy. I don't want you to do sloppy either. I don't do sloppy. And if you want to do sloppy, then you don't need me to represent you because I'm too good for you. So I'm sitting on that panel. Everybody kind of like sugarcoating stuff. Well, before I got on the panel, the artists were around me, you know, there were a swarm of artists around me wanting some advice. Cause once people find out who you are and what you do, you know, artists, they, they, they want to, they want to network with you. You know, they want to pick your brain. And I love that. I love that. I don't have a problem with people trying to pick my brain to a certain extent. Well, I had, I, you know, before I left Houston, Texas, I went home with about 45 CDs. I said, no, I'm not taking any more CDs. Everybody wanted to give me a free CD. Okay. Some were really, really good. Some just needed to be trashed. So what I did, I promised these artists that I would not use their name, but I'd ask for permission if I could critique their CDs and absolutely, absolutely. So there was one uh, uh, CD improperly packaged. It was in a one of those flat cases, which is fine. And it had like a little thin piece of paper on it. No graphic work. Didn't even have the name of the artist. It just had an image. Didn't have any names of songs, just an image. When you open it up, it was just a plain old CD that said Memorex. That was it. Didn't didn't have any songs, name of songs. Didn't have produced by. Didn't tell us how many tracks. And when you flip it over, it was scratched on the back side. So I put that one on the side. Then there was another one in a flat case with beautiful, beautiful, I mean, optimized, colorized artwork on the front of the case with all the information regarding the EP, the names of the songs listed on the front. When we open up the case, they had the silk screen printing beautiful. You could see a beautiful picture of the artist holding his guitar, his, his tracks on the CD, the studio that produced it, his email address, telephone number, and the link to his website. All of that on the front. All of that, which really is not a lot of work, especially if you're going to go to disc makers, you know, you give that, give them that information and you can get with somebody uh, to, to put it on there, send it to them and they will print it. They will screen print it for you. So I had the unacceptable and I had the acceptable in my right hand. The unacceptable, unacceptable was in my left hand. The acceptable was in my right hand. And I didn't, you know, I didn't um, mention the name of the unacceptable one because my role is never to embarrass anybody. I want to help make you better. I don't want to knock you down. You've been knocked down far too many times by friends and family members and haters and naysayers. My job is never to knock anybody down. At the end of that panel, I got so many things. In fact, the artist whose product was unacceptable. Oh my God. He, he's contacted me like three years thereafter, thanking me. He even sent me like several different EPs. Beautiful, beautiful. He's getting shows. He's a singer getting shows out in California doing his thing. He auditioned for The Voice. I think he was on The Voice. He had over a million views on YouTube. 
That's true. So content marketing is very, very important. You cannot, you cannot cut through these steps. If you don't know how to do it, contact Big G Artist Agency at 504-662-9814 or email us at BigGArtistArtists at gmail.com. Go to our website, www.getbiggaa.com. Follow me, Julie Ducre, on Twitter, Real Talk Get Bigger. Also, at BGAA. For real, t- uh, for big G artist agency. So for me, Julie Ducre, I'm at Real Talk Get Bigger for Big G artist agency at B G A A. We are on Instagram at Get Bigger Instagram. Get Bigger Instagram. Also, make sure you install the Spreaker app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R app. Install that free app on your phone. Then browse for Real Talk Big G Artist Agency. Like us on Facebook, Real Talk Big G Artist Agency. And I'm going to love you guys a long time. I thank you all so very much for your love and support. I am going to be back next Saturday, same place, same time, 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, making radio cool again on Crescent City Radio, music for your mind. And I, I want to thank my trainee, Marvin. Thank you, Marvin, for coming in. And I'm not angry at you because you accidentally knocked over the camera, like I said. It's part of the learning process. Have a great weekend, everybody. I love you guys to the moon and back, and I am out.